Imagine walking through a dense forest in Southeast Asia about 300,000 years ago. The air is heavy with humidity, birds calling above, the rustle of leaves all around. You're a member of Homo erectus, an early human species that's already figured out fire, stone tools, and group hunting. But, as you push aside the undergrowth, you catch sight of something ahead. At first, you think it's a tree trunk swaying in the breeze. Then it turns its head. Looming above you is an ape, massive and towering, a creature that makes even modern gorillas look small. This was Gigantopithecus blackii, the largest primate to ever walk the earth. Now, to immediately clear up one of the biggest myths before we dive in, this wasn't some King Kong situation. Gigantopithecus wasn't a skyscraper climbing monster, and it certainly wasn't chasing humans down. But it was definitely real. Standing up to 10 feet tall if it could fully extend itself, and weighing somewhere around half a ton, it lived in the same forests where early humans were making their way through life. That overlap alone makes it fascinating, because when we talk about prehistoric encounters, we usually picture humans facing saber-toothed cats, dire wolves, or mammoths. But here, we have a creature that wasn't a predator, but still could have been terrifying just by its sheer size. The first question people usually ask is, how do we even know this giant ape existed if it's been gone for hundreds of thousands of years? The evidence is limited, but it's convincing. No complete skeletons have been found. Instead, what we have are mostly teeth and fragments of jawbones. They're huge, so large, that when the first ones were discovered, they were mistaken for the remains of dragons. That's not even an exaggeration. In the early 20th century, fossilized Gigantopithecus teeth were actually being sold in Chinese pharmacies as dragon's teeth. It wasn't until 1935 that a German anthropologist, Gustav von Königswald, realized they weren't mythical at all. They belonged to an unknown species of ape that had once lived in southern China. Later discoveries extended its range into Vietnam, Thailand, and other parts of Southeast Asia. But with just teeth and jaws, scientists have had to reconstruct the rest of the creature carefully and with a lot of caveats. Based on the size and shape of the teeth, and comparisons with living apes, researchers estimate that Gigantopithecus stood about 9 or 10 feet tall when upright and weighed somewhere in the range of 600 to 1200 pounds. For comparison, the biggest male gorillas today usually top out around 400 pounds. That's a huge difference, and it's why Gigantopithecus has captured the imagination not just of scientists but also of cryptid enthusiasts who have linked it to myths like Bigfoot or the Yeti. We'll circle back to that later, but for now, it's worth stressing. The scientific consensus is clear. This wasn't a rumor or a legend. It was a real animal living in real ecosystems that humans also occupied. Now, what was this creature actually like? Despite the intimidating size, the evidence suggests it was a herbivore. Its massive molars and thick enamel point to a diet built around chewing tough plant matter, probably bamboo, fruits, and leaves. Think more panda than predator. That doesn't mean life was easy for it, though. The specialized diet may actually have been its downfall, and we'll come back to that when we talk about extinction, but for now, it's enough to picture Gigantopithecus as a giant, shaggy, gorilla-like ape moving through the forests on all fours most of the time, using its size to reach what smaller animals couldn't. Here's where it gets interesting, though. The timeline. The most recent Gigantopithecus fossils date to about 300,000 years ago. That means humans, or at least human relatives, were definitely around at the same time. Homo erectus was established in Asia by then, and Homo sapiens were only about 100,000 years away from showing up. So, while we can't prove that an early human ever locked eyes with this massive ape, the overlap makes it more than just a thought experiment. It was possible. Humans may have not only seen Gigantopithecus, but had to compete with it for food and territory. And competition is really the key here. You might be wondering, could a group of early humans have hunted one of these things? The answer is, probably not. Even with fire and stone tools, taking down an animal that size would have been an enormous risk. One swipe of its arm could break bones. More likely, humans interacted with Gigantopithecus the way they did with elephants or rhinos, keeping their distance, maybe scavenging from them occasionally, but generally avoiding confrontation. What would have mattered more was the indirect competition, Humans and Gigantopithecus both relied heavily on forest plants, fruits, and especially bamboo. And bamboo, while abundant, is vulnerable to climate shifts. During the Ice Age cycles, as forests retreated and climates cooled, the available food shrank. Humans could adapt by hunting, by moving to new areas, by trying new food sources. But Gigantopithecus, with its specialized diet, may not have had that flexibility. 
It's a pattern we see again and again. In changing environments, adaptability often beats size. This is one of the reasons why paleontologists emphasize caution when reconstructing Gigantopithecus. It's tempting to imagine it as an unstoppable force of nature, but the reality is more complicated. It was big, yes, but big animals come with trade-offs. They need more food, they reproduce more slowly, and they can't pivot as quickly when ecosystems shift. So, while humans may have been in awe of them, they also may have watched them decline, slowly disappearing from the forests as climates changed and resources dwindled. There's also the question of appearance. Artists love to depict Gigantopithecus as a giant orangutan, and that's not random. The closest living relatives of Gigantopithecus are actually orangutans, which share many dental and genetic traits. So if you want to imagine what it looked like, start with an orangutan, then scale it up to something twice as tall. Picture long, reddish-brown hair, a heavy jaw, and massive arms. But again, we have to add disclaimers here. Without a full skeleton, we don't know exactly how it walked, whether it was more upright or more hunched, or what proportions it had between arms and legs. Reconstructions are educated guesses, built from the fragments we do have. Some scientists even caution against making it too gorilla-like, since it might mislead people about its actual lifestyle. So, let's talk about what actually happened to Gigantopithecus. Because whenever we picture these Ice Age giants, whether it's mammoths, saber-tooths, or this 10-foot ape, the question is always the same. Why aren't they here anymore? The simple answer is that the world changed, and Gigantopithecus couldn't keep up. Fossil evidence suggests it disappeared roughly 300,000 years ago. That might sound like an eternity to us, but in evolutionary terms, that's yesterday. By then, the planet was deep in the cycle of ice ages. Forests across Southeast Asia shrank, bamboo supplies declined, and open grasslands started spreading. For an animal specialized to chew tough bamboo and fruit, this was a death sentence. Now, specialization isn't always bad. In fact, it can be a winning strategy until the environment shifts. Pandas today are the perfect cautionary tale. They're completely locked into bamboo, and while that's worked for them, they're incredibly vulnerable to habitat change. Gigantopithecus seems to have fallen into the same trap. Where humans, and even other apes, could adapt their diets, this giant ape may have starved when its forests receded, but climate alone probably doesn't tell the whole story. Remember, humans were on the scene. Not Homo sapiens yet, but Homo erectus, and later, possibly early Homo sapiens in overlapping regions. Even if humans weren't actively hunting Gigantopithecus, our expansion mattered. Early humans competed for fruits, roots, and tubers. They used fire to clear landscapes. They shifted territories as resources dried up. All of this would have put extra pressure on an already struggling population of giant apes. It's tempting to imagine some dramatic showdown, but the reality was probably less cinematic. There wasn't one battle that wiped them out. It was a slow squeeze. And this is where the story branches into myth. Because long after Gigantopithecus disappeared, people kept telling stories about giant, hairy, human-like creatures lurking in forests and mountains. The Yeti in the Himalayas, the Sasquatch in North America, the Orang Pendek in Indonesia. None of these creatures are proven, of course, but cryptozoologists, people who study or chase after these hidden animals, have long speculated that the myths might trace back to memories of encounters with something like Gigantopithecus. Now, this is where we have to tread carefully. From a scientific perspective, there's no evidence that Gigantopithecus survived into modern times. No bones, no DNA, no verified sightings. Linking it directly to Bigfoot or the Yeti is more speculation than science. But here's what's fascinating. The human imagination filled that gap anyway. We seem to have this persistent archetype of the wild man of the woods, larger than life, somewhere between human and beast. Whether or not it comes from dim, ancestral memories of real encounters, it shows that the idea of giants never left us. But let's not lose sight of the facts, because the confirmed story of Gigantopithecus is already remarkable enough without cryptid speculation. This was an ape that lived for nearly two million years. It wasn't some evolutionary mistake. It was successful, holding its own in Asian forests through massive swings in climate. For comparison, anatomically modern humans have only been around for about 300,000 years. Gigantopithecus lasted longer than we've been here so far. Its disappearance wasn't because it was inferior to us, it was just unlucky in the timing of climate shifts and ecological 
ecological change. And maybe that's what makes the thought of humans living alongside it so striking. Because when we picture early humans, we often imagine them alone at the top of the intelligence ladder, slowly working their way up. But the truth is that they were surrounded by other intelligent primates, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and in this case, a massive ape that made them look small. So where does that leave us today? Well, the story of Gigantopithecus is still unfolding. We only have fragments, literally, teeth, jaws, and scattered pieces that hint at the full picture. Every new discovery could shift how we understand it. Was it more upright than we think? Was its face more orangutan-like or something different? How far did its range really extend? These are questions that paleontology hasn't fully answered yet. So the next time you hear a tale about Bigfoot or the Yeti, it might be tempting to dismiss it as pure fantasy. And scientifically, you'd be right to. But there's another way to look at it. Those myths might not be proof of survival, but they could be echoes. Echoes of a time when the forests really did hold giants. Echoes of a time when humans weren't the only remarkable primates out there. In the end, the fact that we lived alongside Gigantopithecus, even briefly, reminds us that our place in nature was never guaranteed. For all our tools and fire and intelligence, we weren't alone. We shared the planet with a 10-foot ape. And even though it's gone, the memory of that encounter, half science, half imagination, still lingers in our collective story. 